Feeling increasingly anxious, I called my husband. But no matter how many times I called him, he didn't answer. Still, I was so stressed out that, feeling a bit guilty, I decided to try reaching him through his office. So, I called his workplace. The employee who answered the phone then says something surprising. Ugh, oh, Stephen has been on a week's paid leave since yesterday. I'm Lisa, a 27-year-old office worker. Stephen, my husband, and I were classmates in college. We started dating after reuniting at a class reunion years later as working adults. Our relationship progressed smoothly and we got married two years later. Our classmates celebrated our marriage and our wedding felt like a mini reunion. After getting married, we both worked and supported each other, enjoying a happy newlywed life. About a year into our marriage, I found out I was pregnant. Stephen was thrilled about the baby, and I felt we could build a happy family together. Even when I was on maternity leave and suffering from morning sickness, he was incredibly kind, taking over household chores when he got home from work. He was so moved when our daughter Ashley was born, holding her and being overwhelmed with emotion. I remember smiling, thinking how he'd be this overprotective father, crying at her wedding in the far future. Stephen always came home on time and cherished our daughter, truly valuing our family. I thought we'd always be so happy together, but life is unpredictable. I'm here! Tammy, it's been a while. Mrs. Ashley is adorable. She's going to be a real beauty when she grows up. Here, this is a baby gift. Aw, thanks. I'm making some coffee now. Tammy had been a close friend from high school through college. Look at you, a mom now. You used to say you wouldn't marry until 30. Did I say that? Values change before you know it. Or maybe Stephen was just that great. Well, yeah, he's a kind of good husband. But you didn't like him back in college, right? True. He was just another classmate then. Life's unpredictable. Turning classmates into a loving couple. <laughs> Definitely. We could always have these lighthearted talks. As we were chatting, saying it's her turn next to get married, my husband came home from work. I'm home. Oh, hi. Welcome, Tammy. Ah, Lisa's Prince Charming is back. Prince Charming? <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Guess I should be heading out soon. Wait, why not stay for dinner? Yeah, it'll be more fun with you here. Well, if you insist. We all sat down for dinner together. Steven, you're amazing. Even after coming back from work, you help Lisa with chores and feed the baby. You're like the ideal modern dad. Really? I'm just doing what I think I should do. We put Ashley to bed and then enjoyed drinks, reminiscing about old times. Even after midnight, our conversation was still going. And Tammy ended up staying overnight leaving the next morning. It was nice to have these fun times with friends. I've always felt happy since marrying my husband. After my maternity and parental leave, I returned to work. It took some time to get back into the rhythm of work, but I gradually adjusted. However, around that time, my husband's work became busier, and he started coming home late more often. With increased overtime and weekend work, he always seemed apologetic. Sorry for leaving all the housework and Ashley's care to you. No worries. I know you're working hard. It couldn't be helped that he was busy with work. I managed, juggling work, childcare, and housework, though it was tough. But one day, before heading to work, I noticed Ashley's face was very red. 
She felt hot to the touch. She must have a fever, I thought, and called my work and her daycare that we'd be absent. I spent the whole day caring for her, but her condition didn't improve, and her fever kept rising. I realized she needed to go to the hospital. By the time I started preparing to go, her temperature had reached 104 degrees. Just as I was about to pick her up, she had a seizure. I immediately called an ambulance. At the hospital, my daughter's condition finally stabilized, but she had to be admitted as a precaution. I felt incredibly anxious. What if she got worse? Feeling my anxiety grow, I tried calling my husband again. I know he was away on a business trip. I couldn't come to the hospital. But I just wanted to hear his voice. However, I couldn't get through to him, no matter how many times I called. Why wasn't he answering? It was lunchtime, a reasonable time for him to be on a break. Maybe he was busy with work or meetings? Despite feeling bad about it, I decided to call his office for help. I called his company and explained the situation to the employee who answered, asking to be connected to my husband on his business trip. Then, the employee said something unexpected. Um, Stephen has been on a week's paid leave since yesterday. My mind went blank. What? What does that mean? He said he was going on a business trip and left with his suitcase yesterday. So why is he on leave? And why isn't he answering his phone if he's not working? I was completely confused. Where was he and what was he doing? Especially at a time when our daughter was so ill. Unable to calm my nerves, I called my best friend, Tammy. Hello? Lisa, what's going on? Sorry for calling out of the blue. Ashley has a high fever and had a seizure, so we're at the hospital. Is everything okay? She's stabilized for now, but I can't get in touch with Steven, so I called you. Wait, why call me just because you can't reach him? Well, after my husband, you're my go-to person as my best friend. Oh, yeah, yeah, I get it. I'd do the same. Call my best friend if I had a problem. Sorry, I know you're busy with work. It's okay. I'm off today. That's good to hear. Yeah. Do you think you could come to the hospital to keep me company? Huh? I'm feeling a bit anxious being here alone. Sorry, I can't do that. I'm out and can't get there. I understand. Sorry to bother you when you're busy. I'll let you go since you're out. Don't worry about it. I'll get in touch once I'm done with my errands. Okay. Thanks. I feel calmer after talking to you. I was panicked not being able to reach my husband, but talking to you helped. Glad to hear that. But it's shocking not being able to reach my husband at a time like this. It feels like he's not there when I need him most. Well, he's probably busy with his business trip. That may be, but... Sorry, Lisa. I need to get going. Oh, of course. I hang up now. After ending the call, I felt a bit more composed. Then, a question struck me. How does she know about my husband's business trip? Did I tell her? But I hadn't called her recently, and there's no trace of it in our text exchanges. At that moment, I had a sinking feeling. Then, right after hanging up with her, my husband called. Hello? I heard Ashley has a high fever. Is she okay? How did you know that? I haven't told you anything yet. Oh? Uh, I just thought, since you called during my business trip, maybe she was sick. I see. At that moment, my suspicion turned into certainty. She's okay for now. Sorry to bother you during your trip. I'll let you go now. Oh, okay. Got it. Tammy, 
and my husband are connected. It's not confirmed as an affair yet, but him lying about a business trip and taking leave probably means he's traveling with someone. I quickly hired a private investigator. About a week later, Stephen returned home as if nothing happened. I struggled but managed to act calm. His usual kindness felt fake and I couldn't relax. I hoped my suspicion were wrong. But when the investigation results arrived, weeks later, I was devastated. He was having an affair with Tammy. The reality of both my husband and best friend betraying me was excruciating. It was bad enough that he was cheating, but he was cheating with my best friend. Why? How could they do this to me? I decided to get revenge. I have an idea. How about we have a party at home? A party? What's the occasion? Your birthday is in two weeks, right? Let's celebrate with both our parents. They'd love to see Ashley too. Sounds good. Fun idea. Can we invite Tammy? She knows my parents too. I noticed a slight smile on my husband's face when I mentioned Tammy. Uh, I don't mind. His delight was obvious despite his composed facade. I decided to use the party as my chance for revenge. On the day of the party, I prepared a feast, calling it Stephen's Last Supper. Looks delicious. He seemed excited. Soon, both our parents arrived. The first such gathering since our wedding. Our parents greeted each other with hugs. My in-laws brought my sister-in-law, Christine, who had the day off. As everyone adored Ashley, Tammy arrived. She greeted my and Stephen's parents as if she were just a friend. Oh my gosh, that's Tammy over there, my senior colleague. It turned out Christy worked at the same company as Tammy, but didn't know she was her brother's college classmate and my best friend. What a small world. This is such a coincidence. I'm surprised too. The unexpected connection and leavened the atmosphere. We all sang happy birthday to Stephen. He was overjoyed, blowing out the candles. Thank you for coming here today, everyone. I'll continue to cherish with my family and work hard to live a happy life. Everyone applauded as my husband gave his speech. Then they began giving him their birthday gifts. Everyone gave nice presents, and he was visibly delighted with each one. Finally, it was my turn to give a gift. Happy birthday, Stephen. Here's my gift to you. I handed him an envelope. He looked puzzled as he received it. What's in here? A check, maybe? He opened the envelope to see what was inside. What? What's this? He was visibly shocked. Inside was a single piece of paper. A divorce paper. Wait, Lisa, what does this mean? Explain this to me. Why are you doing this? My parents and in-laws were all visibly shaken. I calmly said, There's more inside the envelope. Take a look. He shook the envelope, and several photos fell to the floor. My mother-in-law picked them up first. What is this? She exclaimed, causing my father-in-law to lean in and look at the photos. Stephen, what the hell are these photos? Huh? He looked at the photos in disbelief and instantly turned pale. Christine, my sister-in-law, picked up a photo and screamed. Why are my brother and Tammy coming out of a hotel arm in arm? Tammy, realizing the situation, turned pale as well. My parents, seeing the photos, began to confront my husband. What's this about, Stephen? Did you betray my daughter? Uh, no, it's not like that. He stuttered, sweating profusely. I confronted them with my pent-up feelings. Sneaking around behind my back and having an affair is despicable. Especially when Ashley had a fever over 104 degrees. You pretended to be on a business trip 
and took paid leave to go on a trip with Tammy. Cherish the family? Give me a break. You're destroying it. Pretending to be a good husband and father while betraying us behind our backs is the worst kind of scum. Stephen had no response, just hung his head in shame. And you, Tammy, you're even worse. Making moves on my husband, knowing who he is, is sick. I'm embarrassed to have been friends with someone like you. This party was to expose you both. Quite the birthday gift, right? Take this chance to reflect on your mistakes. Stephen was so overwhelmed by my words that he fell to the floor. My in-laws and parents looked down at him. Fill out that divorce form right now. Don't trouble Lisa anymore. At my father-in-law's command, Stephen quickly filled out the form. He'll be getting a claim for alimony and child support. Be prepared. I told him after receiving the divorce paper. And Tammy, I'll be claiming damages from you too. But we're done as friends. And I kicked her out of the house. Afterwards, Stephen got a severe scolding from his parents and sister. Meanwhile, I packed my bags and left for my parents' house with them. My in-laws apologized to me and my parents. The divorce went through smoothly. I filed for alimony and child support from Stephen and Tammy. Both of them lost friends from our college circle. Tammy, working in the same place as Christine, lost her credibility and was apparently demoted. My ex-husband, now burdened with a significant debt, lives a lonely life having been cut off by his family. They deserved what they got. As for me, I returned to my parents' home and am raising my daughter as a single mother. Despite the hardship, my daughter's smile heals me, and I'm determined to work hard and watch her grow up.